Hello and welcome back to another Blender tutorial. Today we're going to be looking at 2D animations using graphics that were created in other software and not just grease pencil drawings created in Blender. So as you can see here, I've just got this little car rolling down the road. we got some mountains and hills sliding by in the background and the occasional cloud that goes by. There goes one of them and there'll be another one down here that comes across eventually. So what I have is several different graphics here. The background graphic, the car body graphic, the tires are a separate graphic, and the clouds are a separate graphic. And I imported all of those into Blender, set some motion to each of them, and then export it as a movie. So how do we do that? Very simple. I have already got a Blender file open here, and it's set up for 2D animation. You don't have to do this. But by setting it up for 2D animation, my camera is already focused straight at a plane that I can work with and not off at a 3D angle like it would be if you just opened a generic Blender document and started with that 3D cube. Um, so that just makes it easier to drop things in here and place them directly in front of the camera. So now what I'm going to do is I am going to go into object mode and get out of draw mode. And I'm going to go to edit and preferences. This is very important. It makes life a lot easier. You can draw some planes and then um, UV map some images to them. But if you go into preferences and go to add on and do a search for image, you will find this add on here, import images as planes. Make sure that's checked. And then go here and save your preferences or auto save your preferences, which is even better. And then close that window. Once you've done that, if you go to that file menu and you go down to import, you will find images as planes is one of your options and then go find your images and bring them in I'm on I double clicked let's go there we go I've got my car in the in the uh, blender file now let's go get the rest of them so import images as planes uh, go to 2d assets um, you know what I'm suddenly inspired to try to get all of those as one at once Oop, there we go and now we've got all of our parts and pieces mm, that is not what I tried to do I tried to actually grab that it's not letting me grab that okay well give me I think I got it that time nope I got the car anyway there's our background image and let's scale it up so it whoa maybe not that much come on Scale it up so it fills our camera's view. That looks like it'll work out pretty well. Now I'd like to grab the car and put it right about here, but the car's gone. Where'd it go? Well, when you import images as planes, they all show up on one plane, which means we're, we're getting some overlap. The car is sitting exactly where this background image is. So we need to move the background back and out of the way and move the car forward and the wheels and the clouds and all that. So with this background already selected, I'm just going to press G and start moving it. And I want to move it straight back. And if you look at the, the little widget up here, you can see the Y is running backwards. So I'm just going to go to G, Y, slide it back. Hey, there's our car. And put that further back like that. In the same moment, um, I know the wheels are going to be slightly behind the car as well. So let's go ahead and grab one of those wheels. Same thing, GY, slide it back a little bit, but not so far that it goes through the background. And now let's go back to our straightforward camera view. Now let's go ahead and assemble our objects. I'm actually going to get this cloud out of here for now because the clouds don't appear until later in the animation. And I can see that my background is still not quite big enough, so let's go ahead and scale that up. Okay. And I'll move it. A little bit more, kind of like that. All right, I'm going to put the car down closer to the ground, and I'm going to notice it's crooked, so let's go ahead and rotate it. Mm, about like that. Let's grab a wheel, put the wheel where it should go in the car. Boy, that's an awful big wheel for that car. How about we scale that, too? And that looks about right. Go ahead and zoom and pan a little bit. Take a look. Eh, maybe a little bit smaller. And if it's a little bit smaller, it probably sets a little bit higher up like that. Okay, let's duplicate that. Just Shift D, X to make sure it goes backwards in a straight line, stays lined up with that front tire, and drop it in right there. All right, looks pretty good. We've got our car with some wheels on it and our cloud. 
All right, let's just uh, let's get those wheels spinning. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and spin them both at the same time. And you can do that by clicking this little button up here. It's the transform pivot point. Um, right now it's set to do a medium point. So if you select multiple objects, they will transform around an imaginary point that's somewhere kind of halfway in between them all. What I want them to use is individual origins so that they move around their own origin independent of anything else that might be selected. Um, because then, if I can grab it, really? Okay, so if I, can't, if I can't grab it, I'm gonna come up here and get the wheels in the outliner. There we go, I've got them both now. And now if I hit R for rotate, the wheels rotate uh, around their own origins and not around uh, each other or some various uh, other midpoints. So we're looking to be in good shape. Let's go ahead and set up a keyframe here, just I for keyframe. And uh, all I'm gonna do is rotation right now. Maybe in the future I might want to come back and modify this to do um, location as well. But for now, that's good. And now we'll jump forward, oh, let's say 100 frames. And we will rotate these guys. Now, I would kind of like to see how much I'm rotating them. So I'm going to open up my menu over here on the side. The easy way to do that is just press the N key. And I'm going to rotate. And you can already see which number is changing over here that y is changing so now i'm just going to jump in and type in a bigger number so let's say oh i don't know 3000 and actually you know if i wanted this to loop smoothly that should be a, a version of 360 so how about 3600 okay and let's put in another keyframe, rotation. There we go. And let's go ahead and play our animation. I'll just go backwards here. And, ooh, that's interesting. That one wheel worked fine. Why didn't the other wheel work? Now I'm curious. So that wheel worked great. That wheel, not so much. Yeah, not sure why, but uh, by the time we get to frame 100, that is not at 3600. So we are going to go grab that, change it to 3600. And we're going to come back over here and set a new rotation keyframe. Did I really do that on frame 101? I meant to do it on 100. Okay. Let's go ahead and delete that keyframe. You know, that would be a lot easier if I could actually see my keyframes. Where are my keyframes? Um, that's my dope sheet. Let's go ahead and turn that off. Okay, now I've got my keyframes. Well, some of them. I still don't see one for frame 100. Let's open this dope sheet up a little bit more. Um, it's treating these as grease pencil objects. I don't want that. Let's go to the timeline instead. Now we've actually got the timeline down here already. Let's just open that up and minimize that uh, grease pencil layer. All right, so I don't need to see that much. Okay, um, I've got Two keyframes side by side. Did not mean to have that one right there. Press X, delete keyframe. Let's make sure we are on frame 100. It does look like we are now. And with that object selected, let's make 3600 happen here. And now set a new keyframe, rotation. All right, let's play our animation. Okay, both wheels are doing the same thing. Good. Let's jump back to frame one and um, you know what I'm actually going to shorten my animation so it's just a hundred frames or actually I'm going to make it 99 frames and then it'll be a complete rotation because uh, if I made it a perfect hundred 
then frame 100 would be a perfect match for frame 1. And we don't want that because that would end up being two frames that are identical. And it would make your movie seem to have a stutter in it if it did loop. So by cutting it off at 99, it'll end up being one frame short of that um, stutter. And it'll end up being a perfect loop. So now my car is capable of smoothly driving along. The tires get to where they stop. And then it starts again without any stutter. Back to frame one. Let's get that background moving. So with that background selected, I am going to make more backgrounds. Because if I have this background slide along, it's going to very quickly slide off camera. So I'm going to use a modifier to do this. I could just duplicate it over and over and line them up. But why not go into modifiers and use an array modifier? And you can already see what's happening here. It immediately put two backgrounds side by side. Well, how many backgrounds do you want? Well, how long do you want your animation to be? We can have as many as we need. So four should be plenty, I would think. And I'm not even going to apply that right now. I'll just leave that there. And now what I'm going to do is animate that. So at frame one, it is there. So I'm going to press I. And we're going to just keep track of its location. At frame 100, I want it to be, ooh, how do we make this be a perfect loop? We gotta make sure that uh, the same mountains are in the same place. I bet you I'm gonna mess this up a little bit. Um, let me go ahead and go back to that camera view. Whoops, I guess I was in the camera view. Let me zoom back in on that camera view then. And I'll try to put an indicator here, like the tip of that mountain is right there. And now we're just gonna do GX and we'll slide this along to our last mountain and keep moving over because of course the marker I used is something that disappears as soon as I press G that looks pretty good and we'll press I and set a location again let's give this a play and see what it looks like Okay, so the background moves as the car moves. All the timing is exactly the same. Works out pretty well. This is a little faster than the movie I showed you initially, but it does work out pretty well. Okay, let's have a, a cloud slide by. So I'm going to back this animation up to frame one. I'm going to zoom out a little bit more so I can find my cloud. And let's say on frame one, this cloud is... Whoops, somehow I have the background selected. Undo. Get off that background. Just the cloud, please. Okay, on frame one, let's say that cloud is like there. And so we'll set I, track its location. And then by the time we get to frame 100, that cloud has passed by. So G. And the cloud doesn't need to go in a straight line, so I'm not even going to press X. I'll just sort of eyeball it. Maybe the cloud will even go up a little bit as it's going by. And again, I, location. And if we play that. Now we get our, our cloud going by as we're driving through the mountain scenes. I think we need more clouds uh, just to spice this up a little bit. So with that cloud still selected, I'm just going to duplicate it. Uh, I am not going to use the... Um, array modifier this time because I want them to each be their own thing with their own timing and so we're gonna play through a little bit and let's say oh 25 frames in that, that feels like about the right timing so 25 I'm gonna have I'm gonna lose what where the other clouds go a clouds did I I have no idea what I just did. Do I still have clouds in my outliner? I do. Somewhere. Gee. Oh, they all got stacked. I have no idea how that happened. I not recall pushing a button to tell it to do that. Anyway, let's go back to frame 25. Oh, I know what's happening. Because I already keyframed the one cloud. Oh, yeah, why didn't I think of that? Um, how do I want to deal with that? 
I tell you what, I'm going to import a new cloud instance rather than breaking that animation. So let me undo. So we're back to just one 2D cloud. And I will go into file import again, images as planes. Let's get a new object that is that cloud sprite again. There we go. So now if we play our animation, there's the one cloud that moves. There's the one cloud that's not doing anything yet. I'll jump back to frame one. If I want more clouds than that, I should probably duplicate them before I animate them. Okay, we've got all kinds of clouds here, and you can already see what's about to happen. Uh, so there's frame 25, and that cloud is going to be locked in, and by frame, let's say 80, that cloud is going to be over here, and lock its location in there this cloud let's go back to frame one is going to have its location locked there to start with and then let's say by frame we'll have this one go a little bit slower frame 90 we're going to have this cloud just zoom across the top like that and we'll lock its location in Let's jump back we got one more cloud to animate right here and I'm gonna lock its location in on frame one again and then we're gonna to go to actually you know what this one's gonna be funny we're gonna just put this cloud right over his head now I wish I had some rain to bring in um, and then we could animate it just raining on him the entire trip that's too bad uh, we'll go to frame 100, and the cloud's really not going to move much. We'll just say, in fact, we might even have it get a little bit out in front of him, and just a little higher up. And we'll lock in that location. All right, let's go back so we can view this camera straight on, and not see anything else, and go ahead and play through our animation, maybe with nothing visible selected. There we go. And there's our animation. And I did all of that with images that were drawn in another program. It's interesting how in the 2D animation view, um, things like to disappear into that background. Um, don't worry, they don't do that if you render. So uh, let me change my render settings real quick. Um, yeah, 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 that's fine. Let's put this on my desktop. So it's easy to find. Let's go ahead and call it uh, car and accept. Let's not have a PNG file that doesn't make for a very nice moving file. You would then have to put that together in some other software. And FFmpeg, which is good. MP4 would be nice. And we should be good to go. Let's go ahead and render the animation. Little spinning wheel. Come on. There we go. And, all right, so my computer really needs to have a little bit more power to be able to do this effectively. You see we're only four frames in. Luckily, it's only 100 frames, but we're not going to wait for this entire thing to render because it's not worth it. You can see what's already happening here and what that final animation will look like. And that's all there is to it. You might want to check out another tutorial on... Um, how to create these graphics yourself in other software and get them ready for Blender because uh, we need some transparent areas to make that work. Uh, so I may do a GIMP tutorial uh, for the next video. All right, that's all I'm going to do for now. Thank you. Tune in again for the next video.